Yes, and here with me is also Daniel Zimmerman from uh, FCDI in Karlsruhe. Uh, we are going to talk about the work that we did, that mostly Daniel did actually, about the integration of the Spinnaker and the new robotics platform. So this is a work that, um, as the previous one with the knowledge graph, goes towards uh, the eBrains platform that's going to be developed as part of SGA3. Um, so to explain um, a bit what uh, we did, we need to go um, deeper inside the inner workings of the NRP. So we need to take a look under the hood of, uh, of what Axel showed. That was mostly front end, <laughs> the, front, the user interface. But we need uh, to understand what we do. We need to understand how the platform works uh, inside. So. Um, at the core of the neurobotics platform, there is the so-called closed-loop engine. And the closed-loop closed engine is the synchronization mechanism that um, synchronizes and exchange data between the physical and the neural simulations. So the closed-loop engine um, uh, performs both the synchronization mechanisms. So what it does, it advances both uh, the physical and neural simulation together so that they will keep their time synchronized. And also, the closure engines run these transfer functions that are um, uh, the function in which we implement uh, the logic that translates information between the physical and neural simulation. So these transfer functions are Python functions that defines the point uh, where the two simulations are uh, connected. So from one side, this transfer function attached to um, ROS topics that are um, uh, connected to robot, uh, simulated robotic uh, actuators or sensors. And on the other side, <coughs> this transfer function attach themselves to neural populations. So, and then transfer functions perform the exchange of data with your own custom logic. So, where, uh, so from the um, neural side, uh, as I said, this transfer function attaches to the neural simulator um, for now, the architecture of the platform is it so that you can only have um, a single neural simulator at a time. So uh, you can select which neural simulator you want to use. can be NAST, can be NAG, can be TensorFlow. But you can only have one at a time. So the closed loop engine will synchronize only one simulator and only one, neural, one brain model at the time implemented on a single simulator. <laughs> So in our work, uh, what you did is was add another simulator option that is uh, Spinnaker. That so uh, you can choose also Spinnaker as a neural backend for your closed loop simulations. Going a little bit deep, again deeper inside the architecture of this closed loop engine. So the um, the engine already provides abstraction layers that are the interfaces towards these different simulators. And this is how we were able to implement um, the possibility to have multiple simulators before, and this is what we used to add Spinnaker as a neural backend. So in particular, what we were interested in are the two um, uh, interfaces that are related to the neural side, and that are the, the brain control adapter and the brain communication adapter. So these are two uh, abstract interfaces that upon imp when implemented, they, they should provide the possibility from one side, from the control adapter, to synchronize a simulation with the rest of the CLE, and from the communication adapter side, to provide means of communication with the neural population. That means to uh, select which population you want to attach your transfer function to, and with which device, more on this. Uh, slightly later. So what we did, basically, starting from these interfaces, we, we implemented these interfaces uh, with this concrete implementation that are related to the communication and the control of the Spinnaker simulations. Um, re so regarding the communication mechanism between the new robotics platform and the Spinnaker boards, uh, we decided to go with the um, Ethernet communication that is, um, I mean, the easiest one to use, of course, compared to the 
SATA o Spinnaker Link Communication um, uh, possibilities, but it, of course it's also the slowest. The slowest means in, in terms of bandwidth. So the, the bandwidth within the new robotics platform and the Spinnaker board is limited. So you, you probably cannot receive, for instance, all the spikes, spikes that are generated during a Spinnaker simulation. So you can only receive a subset of these. Mm. But of course, you can, during the simulation, save all the spikes inside the Spinnaker button, then retrieve all the uh, spikes at the end of the simulation. So the spikes are not lost. <laughs> They're only lost in, in the communication during the interaction between the new robotics platform and, um, and the Spinnaker simulation. So regarding the synchronization, as I said, we implemented this brain control adapter interface that among other things has the possibility, you know, I mean, it has the job of uh, loading the brain, loading the populations of which you can attach the transfer function, um, initialize everything, but most importantly as this run step uh, method. This run step method basically tests the neural simulation to perform a synchronized step, so uh, to advance the simulation time and run all the neural dynamics and everything. And this is what uh, this, the closure engine uses to uh, advance both the simulation on the neural side. So in, the, in our case, uh, the run step for Spinnaker, what it does is, is basically running the whole, the, the whole network on Spinnaker, and that means loading the application data, loading the binaries on the board, and then starting the simulation. And the simulation is run uh, endlessly on the Spinnaker board, so the, the simulation waits for a stop signal. But of course doing this means that the, the simulation is not really synchronized with, uh, with the closed loop engine, because uh, um, as it is now, there is no way, I mean, this, it's not implemented any mechanism to uh, run a, syn a synchronous step uh, of the uh, simulation on the Spinnaker board. So what we do is to run endlessly the simulation and then we, um, we receive events through live connection and we inject events through live connection, but the, the key point is that this does not um, provide us with a synchronization for time. So the time of the simulation, of the physical simulation and of the closed loop engine in general, is not the same simulation time as the Spinnaker board. So, so probably what's gonna happen is that the, the physical simulation is lower because the Spinnaker simulation is real time. So the, the Spinnaker time will be far ahead compared to the physical simulation time. So this is something to keep in mind. It's a current limit, it's a limitation of the current implementation. So from the communication side instead, um, as I said, there is this uh, communi brain communication adapter that provides the points towards which uh, the closed loop engine communicates with the neural simulation. What, what this communication adapter provides are the so-called devices. So mm, if you're not familiar with the NRP, devices are a key concept that you find in transfer functions. So this is an example of a transfer function. Uh, that uh, is, is connecting a uh, robot camera to some neurons in a brain model. Um, so it has two points of attachment. One from the robot side, that is a topic reading the camera images at every time step. And then on the other side, um, as an interface towards the brain. So um, the, the things I highlighted in red are devices. So, so um, these devices are neural models that are created via this transfer function and that attach to some populations in the, in the brain. So in this case, we have some Poisson devices, means that are Poisson spike generators that are connected to these sensors populations in the brain. Um, and then you, uh, inside the transfer function, you can use the device uh, in an object-oriented fashion to, for instance, set the rate of this Poisson generator depending on the input that you receive from the camera. So the, the, um, the job of this communication adapter is to provide this device to uh, and to attach them 
to the neural simulation, so to get them to attach them to the neural simulation. In this case, uh, so the devices are run inside the, the CLE, so on the process on your PC, but they should connect and interact with the simulation on the Spinnaker board that is, uh, so through Ethernet. So that means that these devices will make use of uh, spiking, so of the, um, well, the facilities, pro the utilities provided by the, um, the Spinnaker libraries to li inject or live stream events from the board. So in particular, for instance, from the, um, for the spike generation, uh, so starting from a transfer function where you set the rate of your device, then this rate is sent to the Spinnaker Poisson control connection, which uh, send the rate to a population of um, Poisson spike generator that is on the Spinnaker board. Uh, so in this way, we don't need to send spikes from the CLE. It means that we don't need to generate times from the CLE. And this is good because then the, probably if you generate times from the CLE side, that, that time will be already passed on the Spinnaker board because it's not synchronized. So basically the, the Poisson spike generator will change their rate <coughs> as soon as they will receive the message, even if there is no perfect synchronization between the two. Um, on the other side, uh, we, we should receive spikes from the uh, simulation. Of course, not all of them, as I said, because there are limits uh, uh, due to the Ethernet connection, but still we can receive spikes from some populations. We might need them for another transfer function. So we receive the spikes, that means the ID of the neuron that has spikes and the time of spiking. But again, we cannot use the time of spiking because of the synchronization issues. So from these spikes, we take only the, um, the neuron ID that spiked, and then we zip it with the, um, the actual time of the neurobotics platform. So at the time of the uh, synchronization engine, the, because we, if we receive the spike at this time, for us it means that yeah, this is the time of arrival of the spike. And then we can use this information fr uh, from our transfer function. Uh, similar, in a similar manner, we can also receive events related to uh, the dynamic state of neurons. So um, uh, if you want to receive the, um, the membrane potential uh, of, the, of a neuron, this can be generated and can be sent through packets um, via Ethernet to our platform. And of course, we are going to receive many events because the Spinnaker simulation is faster. But at a certain point, when the transfer function is run, we are only taking the last uh, voltage, for instance, that we received from the Spinnaker board. And then uh, we can use from this from our devices inside our transfer function. So these are all uh, more or less the mechanisms that are um, under our, the device that we already implemented uh, in the platform. So to sum up, um, for now, this integration works, but uh, it has some limitations. So mostly, uh, I mean, the most important one is that the, thing, the communication is not really synchronous because uh, uh, of what I said, that the sp Spinnaker bot is running continuously at its own simulation time. Then there is the slow communication channel. So if you want uh, to show all the spikes uh, in the nice uh, spike uh, widget that we have in the front end, you cannot do that because probably um, this will overload the, the Ethernet connection. And then not all devices are implemented. In particular, from all the possible devices that we support in the, in the NRP, only the highlighted one uh, are currently implemented. Um, in particular, we cannot yet implement the, all the um, current-based devices because there, no, there is no concept of uh, current events <laughs> in, in Spinnaker, so this cannot um, be feasible for sure at the moment. Uh, but uh, with the others, uh, we, I mean, you can already create uh, interesting stuff. So 
As I said, this integration works and it works on, it's already deployed on the platform. It works on, uh, on your machine if you have a Spinnaker board, but it also works on the server. And this uh, work done by um, Andrew O'Rourke from the Spinnaker team uh, that deployed uh, the new robotics platform on the Manchester server. So basically you can access uh, these servers if you have an HPP account. And this is what uh, we are gonna do later in the tutorial. And with this, you can also access all the power of the Spinnaker 1 million core machine and the NRP together. So this is very cool. And uh, I, th I think that's it from my side. I will leave the floor to Dan, which will explain uh, uh, what was is already done in terms of experiments uh, with this Spinnaker NRP integration. Thanks. Yeah, thank you very much. So let's see what's the current state of the Spinnaker integration. Um, we um, can control our um, Husky robot that we already saw in the previous uh, presentation from Axel using a Spinnaker. We can um, use uh, brains uh, that consist uh, of uh, up to 800 neurons. Here in this example, we see, um, we see a brain with only eight neurons. So we have these um, five input neurons that um, receives the visual uh, information of the scene, so that directly comes from the, from the camera of the, of the Husky robot. Then this, is inf uh, this information is, um, um, yeah, is um, executed, and we have a central neuron and two output neurons that directly control the actors of the robot. So one output neuron controls the right uh, wheels, and the other output neurons, uh, neuron controls the left wheels. And um, that's it. Um, then uh, the Husky um, robot can um, can move towards a red color. So when the Husky robot sees uh, a red color, then this robot will move toward it. And um, as I said, we only we also have uh, bigger brains, larger brains, because um, eight neurons. Um, there we don't really have a big advantage um, using Spinnaker because we can also simulate eight neurons quite fast. Using, uh, using Nest, for example, but um, if we scale up to 800 neurons, then uh, we really see uh, the advantage of the real-time hardware of Spinnaker um, because uh, 800 neurons on a uh, usual <coughs> machine, um, it's very hard to calculate these in, in real time. Okay, um, then we show you a little uh, demo video. Uh, can you Yes, so here you can see my monitor um, with the uh, uh, NRP and here uh, at the bottom you can see the Spinnaker board. So uh, our brain runs on this board. It's connected uh, via Ethernet and we can uh, launch uh, our experiment as usual in the NRP and um, press the play button. Then the brain gets loaded onto the board. It takes some time, 10 to 20 seconds um, maybe. Um, so now all uh, the, yeah, the, the brain information is loaded uh, onto the board. And um, after this is finished, now you see that the robot moves and now we have a direct um, communication between the NRP that runs uh, on a PC and the Spinnaker board. So the brain is now calculated on a Spinnaker board and we have this uh, communication as uh, Lorenzo mentioned. And here you also can see the, the behavior of the, um, of the Husky robot that I mentioned. So he um, just turns uh, until he, uh, he sees a red color and um, we, um, we induce these uh, red colors uh, by, choosing, uh, by, by changing uh, the colors of the, of the screens. And um, yeah, that's basically um, the experiment. So you, ca you can see the brain file there, so you can modify it. Um, for example, you can um, switch uh, some, or you can change some uh, synapse parameters, or um, yeah, also use a completely different brain. Um, and now we should also see uh, some visualization. Um, that's maybe yeah. Okay. Um, here you can see uh, the brain, the spikes visualizing um, on our visualization tool. Oops. So
So, um, yeah, we can receive the spikes from the Spinnaker board and do whatever we want with them. So visualize them or save them for other purposes for investigation. Um, yeah. So we have also another Spinnaker experiment available with 800 neurons, as I told. And um, if we um, compare this experiment with our um, Nest experiment, we can see that uh, the Spinnaker is, uh, is much faster because it's basically real-time hardware um, compared to our slower calculation on a PC. Okay, thank you. That's it.